Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne. We are here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest to talk about bare root fruit trees. So we've got all our fruit trees in now and we're ready to start selling them to the public. Um, when we get them in, they are a bare root, so we put them in pots and uh, are able to bring them out here and set them on the floor so people can take them home. But when you pull them out of the pot, they're going to be loose. So it's, it, they are really true bare root. But this way you can get a tree that's not really expensive and it's gonna and it's gonna go into a smaller area right off the bat and then you can train it as it grows basically you're going to be training these trees to become the bigger trees that you're looking forward to so i just thought we would go over a few of the varieties of the types of trees that we're carrying um i i like sweet fruit so i'm not a big tart fan so most of the ones i'm going to talk about today are going to be the ones that are going to give you sweetness and are going to work for our area now, there is one thing you need to be concerned with. These trees all need full sun, at least five hours of direct sun to do well. And they need good draining soil. So you wanna soak them well when you water them and allow them to dry out between waterings. And they're gonna need some training for you to get them to produce the fruit trees in the area on the tree that you're wanting it to. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So, and they also need a chill. The deciduous fruit trees is what we call these. These don't have leaves on them. They need a certain amount of hours below 45 degrees. And all of the tags that are on these trees give you that, that information. In our area here in southern um, uh, Orange County, we usually average anywhere from two to 300 hours. When you start getting a 400 hour chill, we're kind of pushing it a little bit. Anything above 400 is a question is if we don't have a, a cold winter, you're not going to get any fruit. They'll leaf out, the tree won't die, but you won't get any fruit. So you want to make sure that you pick one that has the chill that you're going to um, be able to get. If you live closer to the mountains or maybe up farther inland, then you might have an area where you could put something that has a four to 500 chill hour. So. I'm going to start with the apples. So we have the ones that I like to recommend, and those are the ones I like to eat, is this one's a Fuji apple. And this one here, as you can see on our, these are the tags, and they have all the information that you could ever need on this tree. And let me kind of explain some of these things here. So this one here, it does say it's a 500 chill hour, but for some reason the apples have a tendency to, to be printed a little higher, but they still work in our area. Um, I've had this one actually coastal and still getting really good fruits on them. And these produce about September, October, somewhere around in there. And they're just like, they're crisp, they're sweet, and they're fairly easy to grow. Apples are easy to trim. You can trim them pretty much anywhere. They're going to grow and flower. So it's, it's not, you don't have to worry about is it old wood or new wood or be confused about the trimming. The other apple I like <clears throat> is the red Fuji, <clears throat> which is just going to be a redder version of that, the regular Fuji. And still, it's the same thing. It's nice and crisp. If you uh, have a thing about eating fruit or uh, apples that are red, then this would be the one you'd want to use. Now also we have the Granny Smith, which is really sour. So that was not something that I like, but I'm sure people who like sour um, apples, the, the Granny Smith would work for you. So we do have that one too. We have the Anna, we have the Gala, we have a Gordon. So we have all those as well. So now I'm gonna move on to the uh, apricots. Now, unfortunately, apricots have a tendency to need a little more chill. So this particular one is one of my favorites. I don't know if you can get that photo there for you. But <laughs> this is a Blenheim or Royal apricot. It has a large fruit and it is uh, very sweet. And again, this one has a 400 chill. So it's a kind of a question as to whether or not we're gonna end up getting some actual fruit off of this guy if it's not cold. Um, but if you have the space, this is a good one to, to, to give a try. I would be more towards the inland than the, uh, than the coastal on this one. We do have the Katie. This one here is a low chill. This one is two to 300 hours. 
And this has a sweet fruit as well, and it's a large fruit as well. Um, as you can see, it's already starting to flower. So that means that it is niche, it has accumulated the hours that it needed to bloom. So how it works is as the um, hours come on, once these trees get those hours that they needed, they'll initiate the bloom, which is what happens here. Now sometimes if you have a low chill plant and they bloom early and we get a late frost, then that's where the problems come. I don't know how many times, you know, getting ready to go up and pick cherries in Cherry Valley and they had a late frost. So um, that can happen here too. We do get frost and it only takes one and then there goes your fruit. So it's kind of questionable sometimes if you're going to get a fruit, but if it's if you really like these, it's worth the worth the effort. Okay, so then we're going to go down into the cherries. Now we do have some low chill cherries for this area. They are not your Bing cherry, so they're they're a little bit smaller than a Bing, but they are sweet and they will give you the cherry flavor that you've been looking for. We do carry Bing cherries, but they need. Uh, 700 hours. We carry these for the people that are up in the mountains, say Big Bear or even in the canyon. Sometimes there's some areas there that get pretty cold. So we can't, they can get the Bing, but don't pick up the Bing if you're coastal because you're not going to get anything. You'll get a beautiful, fr a beautiful tree, leaves, all kinds of stuff, but you will not get any fruit. So also one thing you have to keep in mind is that some trees need pollinators. Now so far all the ones that I've showed you do not need pollinators. So that means they'll say on the list here, um, like for, for example, this one here is a Lapin Cherry and that one will work in this area as well, although it does claim it needs a 500 chill hour. So again, if you don't have room in your yard, and you just have room for a few things, this cherry is probably not one that you would want to try. But if you got a big space and you love to try things, this would be one. I did get some Lapin cherries in a lower chill area, so I know it does work. And this one says on here, it's self-fruitful. So it doesn't need another pollinator. Later on, we'll come around to some that do. So I'll point that out to you. So the other one that we have, this is a Royal Crimson Cherry. And this one here is a low chill, and this one only needs two to three hundred hours. So this one's a good bet if you want to try a cherry. And this one is self-fruiting as well. So you're going to be able to get some fruit off of something like this in a low chill situation. Now we're going to go to our nectarines. Nectarines are kind of like peaches without fuzz. So the one that I'm going to talk about today, this one's called Double Delight. And the reason why this one is so cool is it's got a pretty flower as well. This one is 100 chill hours, so it doesn't need that much to produce fruit. Again, this is one of those ones where it, it may fl uh, fr flower early, and then if we get a frost, he's not going to be a happy camper. Um, it doesn't kill the tree, it just kills the flowers. So there's always things you can do. You can cover them if we get a frost warning. You could put some little miniature lights up inside of them to keep some heat in there and then put a cover over the top, a blanket, a towel, um, a tarp, just not plastic. You don't want to put plastic over these. Um, and that could save it or you could, if it's in a pot, you could actually wheel it into your garage. So that's an option too if you want to put these in pots. And these can grow in pots. You can keep them small by trimming them. So these are all semi-dwarfs. We don't carry any um, standard form trees because most people don't have a big yard. Um, there's, I'm sure, people out there that sell the standard forms. We don't do that anymore um, because these will give you a lot of fruit. So that's my spiel on that. Okay, this one, this one is called Spice Z Nectar Plum, and this is exactly what it says. It's a nectar and a plum combo. And the leaves are purple when they come out, so it's kind of pretty. This one is only a two to three hundred chill hour. So, and this one is a white flesh inside with a maroon skin on the outside. And now one thing I will say with the nectarines, when they start to get set fruit, you have to spray them on a fairly regular basis for thrips. So you would use your oil spray. If you don't spray, they get, the fruit gets kind of gnarly and weird. It, it'll still produce 
but for whatever reason the nectarines seem to be the ones that that you need to spray none of the other ones seem to be needing that but that one these do um, if you notice that your fruits are all kind of weird that's what's going on you've got thrips okay now we're going to switch around over to this side and we're going to talk about the regular plums now as you can see we got a lot of trees here this one oh i don't want beauty I don't want the beauty plum. I'm looking for the burgundy, which is this one. Now I don't have a I don't have a picture for this one. The burgundy is a dark skin with a dark flesh, and it's very sweet. It is self-fruiting, and this one is only 300 chill hours. So this one is a good one. Then we have also the Satsuma. I do have a picture for that. And this is like a kind of a greenish mottled skin with the burgundy inside. This is also sweet. Both of these are sweet. Um, Santa Rosa, which is what a lot of people get. This one is dark on the outside with um, amber flesh on the inside, but this one's tart. So it's the skin is tart and the seed is tart. So if you like tart, you like this one. This one is self-fruiting. Now the Satsuma is not. Satsuma needs to have a pollinizer. And this one says that it needs Santa Rosa or late Santa Rosa. Now, that being said, this has a 300 chill hour. The burgundy has a 300 chill hour. So it makes more sense to me that you would get a burgundy and a Satsuma to, in order to do this. Because guess what? They have to be flowering at the same time. If they don't flower at the same time, there's no way to cross pollinate. So I don't understand why they've put those beauty, because beauty flowers a lot earlier. So again, I choose to go with the ones that have the same chill hours if you're going to get a pollinizer for that one. So that's the combo I would do. The burgundy does not need a pollinizer, so you could go just straight with the burgundy, or if you wanted to do the satsuma, the burgundy would be a good companion for that. Some people really like the satsuma, so that's what you would need. Now, let's go down here to the peaches. All right, this first one here that we come upon is a Saturn peach. And the one thing I like about this, if you can see that flower right there, it's a double flower. So it's a really pretty bloomer in the spring. So it gives you ornamental as well as a fruit. This one is a 250 chill hour and it's a self-fruiting as well. Then I have the Red Baron which is very similar to the Saturn. This one has a red double flower. So both of these peaches would give you a pretty flower. This one is a two to 300 hours and it's also self-fruiting. Um, they're, they're they are all sweet. These ones that I'm talking about are sweet because I've got a sweet tooth. The other one I really, really like, and this is probably my favorite one for, for the fruit, is the July Alberta. I come from Colorado and where I lived was they have the peaches and I think our their peaches I are their peaches rival a Georgia peach any day in my mind. So this one is the closest to that. Now the one thing about low chill peaches in for me they don't have the flavor. The higher the chill, if you can get away with a little bit higher chill, they have a better flavor and the meat is a little more firm. Um, they all have fuzz on them, so you have to wash off the fuzz um, or peel them. Uh, if you've eaten a peach with fuzz on it, you know, it's not fun. <laughs> so this one here does have, need a 400 chill hour. So this probably would not work with somebody on the coast. But for, for us here, we're off of El Toro Road and Lake Forest you should, you, and Mission Viejo, Rancho Santa Margarita, those areas, the canyons, those were, those will work, this will work in those areas. Anything coastal, I would probably not use this one. Um, but I do have, let's see, where is it? Okay, this one is a Babcock peach. Let me get a picture for you. <clears throat> this one has a these all are yellow flesh except for this one this one is a white flesh this one is very sweet and this one has a lower chill this one is a 200 chill hour and these are all self fruiting so you don't need another one this one the only downfall on this one is that when it's ripe you got to pick it and eat it so you can always freeze them 
Um, cut them up and freeze them, put them in your smoothies. You can thaw them back out, throw them in some cottage cheese or some yogurt. Um, but these are so sweet and they're so worth it. Um, I, this is probably, between this and the July Alberta, these are my two favorite peaches for sure, for sure. So, so that's that. Now we're gonna go into the pears. Now, um, typically, pears need a higher chill so like your Bartley pear that you get in the grocery store is not going to grow here that needs about 800 chill hours so um, the ones that that uh, let's see was the hood pear this one this is a hood and this one is sweet not tart as you can see it's not got the typical pear shape it's more round um, this one is 100 to 200 chill hours so that's a good one and it's early season and it says here the skin is it's got a yellow green skin and it's a mild flavored flesh so so this is a good one for um, uh, pears and then we also have the Asian pears this is 20th century Asian pear and these are sweet and they're pretty easy to grow. This one here is three to four hundred hours. It should work in this area. I've had it coastal and it's worked pretty good. The downfall about pears is they can get a fire blight and so can the apples but the pears are way worse than apples for fire blight and what that is fire blight it looks like somebody took a torch to your to your branch and just flamed the leaves. They turn black and it's you and it's spread by the bees so if there's an infected tree in the area they go get the pollen and then they go take it to another one and then that kind of spreads the disease you can usually trim it out and disinfect your trimmers to get rid of it there are some sprays you can use generally if it's not wet which we haven't really had a lot of rain lately um, if it's really wet it could have more problems if it's not that wet then it won't have as many problems with it but that is something that you need to be aware of with the pears if you see a branch that's all looked like somebody took a flamethrower to it then you know okay I got fire blight and then you need to take action and take care of it so it doesn't spread to your other to your other trees so again when you tr when you prune it you have to disinfect it with a Clorox wipe or some bleach water whichever uh, but that's the only downfall about the pears. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, there was my tree. I just pulled it out of the way. Okay, so we'll come around the corner. I do have some genetic dwarf fruit trees. Um, I'm choosing, I do have nectarines. Genetic dwarf means that they only get about six to ten feet naturally. So you can certainly trim them and keep them smaller. And when I say 10 feet, I've not seen them really get that big, but it, it's listed on there, so that's what I'm going to say. Um, the one that I'm going to, <clears throat> this one is called Pixie. <clears throat> Pixie Miniature Peach, and I do have some nectarines over there as well. And this one here is 400 hours, um, but really it's, again, and I don't know that I do coastal. There may be some other ones. I don't think there's any other ones that are that are uh, lower chill. But this one seems to be a pretty good performer. And look at all these. It's getting ready to pop buds. So it should be just fine in this area right here. It's getting ready to flower. So that's a good indication. If it's getting buds, then it's got the chill that it needed. So I'm happy with that one. All right. So now we've got. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to talk about the jujubes. We do have jujubes. We have the Lang, and we have the Leaf. Oh, goodness. And as you can see, they like to be with each other. And these guys have thorns, so you have to be careful with these. There we go. Watch out, everybody getting crazy here okay this is Lee now the reason why I'm being so particular of getting both of these out here is they need each other to produce fruit now later on we will get another variety that does not need a pollinizer um, and that comes from a different source so that's why we don't have it right now in the bare root um, this one here needs 300 chill hours they both need 300 chill hours. And like I said, they need each other to produce fruit. 
I don't know if you've ever had a jujube, but it's, it's about this big and it reminds me of a dried apple. It's, it's sweet, it's very sweet, but it's not real juicy. But there, a lot of people like them and I don't, they're, they're good for me too. Um, again, these do have some thorns, so they might, you know, be sure that you don't put it somewhere next to a walkway or you might not be happy with this tree. But we do carry those. All right, so now we're going to talk about some of the, um, the uh, figs that we carry. We do have a good a selection of figs. And again, I'm going for the ones that are sweet. Now, um, the Peter's, Peter's honey is very sweet. And these are all, whoops, that's Chicago Hardy. There we go. Somebody's been moving these around. So this one here is very sweet. It's like white, it's a whitish yellow or greenish yellow flesh with a dark amber, um, uh, oh, sorry, greenish yellow skin with a dark amber flesh. It's uh, sweet and it's a uh, low chill. And uh, the, all of these are self fruiting. The blackjack, I don't have a picture for it, but blackjack is a black fig. It's a uh, medium size. This one and the brown turkey are, you can pretty much, they're again brown with uh, amber flesh. You, you can keep them whatever height you want to keep them. So figs can get big if you let them. The, the black mission is your commercial fig and it gets big. Um, I had a black mission and we would whack it back every year and, and, and it grows out, it gets 10, 15 feet. It just grows about eight feet every year, it's crazy. Um, these other ones can be kept small. Same with the Peter's honey, uh, can, can be kept small. And usually what you do, once you get your framework of your tree, then the, the, everything that grows out during that year is where they fruit. So if they have, usually it says, if they've got leaves, they've got fruit, and that's pretty much it. Once they start to leaf out, then they fruit. Um, then you can, once you have your main structure, you can cut everything back at the end of the, of the season and, and just have that main structure again. And then the next season it grows out and that's where all your fruit comes from. So there are some, there's a Braba, Braba fruit that's not as good that comes on some of like, let's see, there's one here. See how this has got some fruit on it? And this is old growth, so you, we've got some fruit, fruit on there. So they call that a Braba crop. So if you're constantly trimming them back to that main frame again, you don't have to worry about the Braba crop. It kind of takes um, some of the energy away from the main crop. Not too bad, but um, uh, it's not as tasty. So by pruning them back, keeping them down to size, you'll have a little bit better crop during, throughout the summer. Um, and then the other one I wanted to talk about, and this one's called Chicago Hardy. And this one can take a frost. It's 100 chill hours, which means all of a sudden, you know, it's leafed out and everything's good and then we get one of those late frosts. This is supposed to be a really hardy tree for that. So if you're in an area where it's, you got a higher chill area, and this guy comes out and it freezes, it's not going to kill the tree or it's not going to kill necessarily the fruit because if it's growing, it's fruiting. So these are awesome trees. Now we also carry the persimmons. We have a few here right now. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We have the hachia, which is when you eat this one, this one is an um, astringent. So you have to wait for it to get soft before you eat it. Um, otherwise, when you eat it, it's like, it's sticky and weird in your mouth. So, but, but it's soft when you eat it and it's very sweet. Some people put it in a, the freezer and eat it like ice cream. I don't prefer a soft mushy fruit, but I'm sure a lot of people do because we do sell this. My favorite one for the persimmon is the Fuyu. 
and this one is about that big about that thick kind of looks like a flat apple and it's very sweet when it's crisp so it'll go soft too and it's just fine if you eat it when it's hard it doesn't make your lips all weird and your tongue all funky like this one does so this is a good one i really like the fuyu and i think a lot of people do because we sell a lot of these now as you can see these are very small trees these are young trees and if it were me i would either leave them in these containers for at least six months to a year to get them a little more root in there before you start planting them um, then after they've been in the pot for about a year I would go ahead and plant them in the ground after that they are so sensitive with the roots that I would be afraid to pull it out so we do have you have to be careful with these persimmons so if you waited till like the end of the season we might run out but we'll be getting ones that have been rooted out a little bit more but right now these are the bare roots so be very careful if you plant these um, because they are very sensitive at this age. Um, let's see, whatever. We also have an Izu, um, and I think we have the, do we have the coffee cake right now? Nope, just Fuyu. Oh, here's the coffee cake. We do have the coffee cake, and we do have the Izu, and I want to say these are both non-astringent. So, you, you can eat the, you eat these when they're firm. All right, now we're going to end up with talking about our pomegranates. So we have quite a few pomegranates right now. I have a few more varieties in a smaller size, but right now we have some good size five gallons. Most of these trees take, even all the other ones that I were talking about, it takes about three years for them to get a really good crop to where you're sharing them with your friends and neighbors um, and your family. Um, so be patient with these. What's nice about these is you are in charge of making the structure for these trees. And I will do another video on how to plant these trees and how to prune them. So keep an eye out for that. And oh, by the way, if you like this video, make sure you hit the click, uh, click the like button, hit the click, <laughs> and click the like button and the subscription button and the bell if you want to know when we're going to get more videos. So anyway, let's go ahead now that I got that out of the way. Um, we're going to talk about my favorite one as far as is the sweet. And this one has the, the seeds inside. There's not really, if you've ever eaten a pomegranate, you get the seeds. Now I've kind of gotten used to it. I'll go ahead and eat the seeds. It kind of makes me feel like I'm getting some, some good gut stuff going in there. But these guys really don't have seeds. They're they're very soft. They're easy to and and they're not they're not dark red. They're like a pink to a light color. So if you got kids who don't like the seeds, this is a good one to get them started on. And they're very sweet. And they're not going to make a mess because that pomegranate juice is kind of it stains. So and it's red. So this one is not so red. This one is kind of clear. I wish I had a picture to show you, but you can always Google it. Um, then the other one I like to talk, the, the wonderful is the one that you get from the grocery store. So the, the general pomegranate that you get with the red inside, um, they're, they're, they're very common, they're not anything special really, but they're the ones that they normally sell in the grocery store. That's called a, a wonderful. So you already probably know about those, and we do sell those. Then we have the pink satin, and it is kind of like the same thing. It's pink inside, and the seeds are smaller. They're trying to breed these with, with the smaller seeds, because I guess a lot of people don't like that extra roughage. Um, but this is also a sweet variety, and it's not going to stain. So between the sweet and the pink satin, those are two good choices for, for kids, if you have kids. Um, the granada I like is it granada is that, that big one so when you see that big pomegranate unless they put a sign on it saying it's a special variety um, it's probably the granada and they're fairly sweet I think they're a little sweeter than the wonderful the wonderful to me is a little tart it's got a little toying to it whereas these other ones I'm talking about they're sweet I don't like the tart for whatever reason I don't like it but and then I also have the ever sweet ever sweet again is very sweet and again it has small seeds and it it doesn't have a little you know the inside the aerials are pretty good size but um and it is a light light lighter uh, st uh lighter colored flesh inside so again less staining and then 
We don't have the bigger one, but we do carry this one in a smaller size. This is called Eve. So like, you know, the Garden in, a Garden of Eden type Eve. You know, they say it was a pomegranate that she picked. Anyway, this one is large and it has, um, let's see, does it have the, it says it's like a cherry slurpee. So that sounds good to me. I, I don't know about you, but I kind of like a cherry slurpee type like pomegranate. That sounds fun to me. So I do have some larger trees, as you can see here. These are these are um, peaches, and, and I do have some larger of the the genetic dwarfs. These here, and then I also have the the salads, which have different varieties on the same tree. Now, bef what I'm I don't necessarily like these trees, but if you only have one place to put one, um, and you want three trees, then this would be something you could try. Make sure, because usually there's always one graft that's a little bit smaller than the other grafts. Make sure that when you plant it, you put the small graft on the south side of the tree so that it gets the most sun. And then you have to make sure that you keep everybody equal to each other so somebody doesn't overgrow the other one. Now sometimes what happens is one of these grafts die off and then you're left with just a twofer. So you want to make sure that you baby your, your smallest graft, like on this one. This one is the smallest graft on this side. So you're going to be putting this one on the south side of your tree, meaning that it's going to get the most sun as possible. So that's, that's it in a nutshell as far as what I'm carrying right now. We do have other varieties in between those ones that I was talking about, but like I said, I just like to feature the ones that are sweet because that's what I like to eat. So thank you again for watching and have a great day.